Stitch desiccant air dryer. I was using it all last summer, and I wasn't exactly happy with it. This could do pretty well with normal air tools, as well as even spray painting. However, within about 10 minutes of sandblasting, it was completely saturated. So basically, it's just good for lip service. So let me ask you, what would Chris Hemsworth do? Chris Hemsworth would build a dirt cheap, do-it-yourself, desiccant air dryer out of PVC pipe. Yeah, Most of these items I got from Lowe's, except for a few that I'm going to point out. This here is a few feet of 2-inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe, which I got for $7.10. This is 3 4 inch PVC pipe that I got for $2.69. And this is half inch PVC pipe that I got for $2.14. Next, what you got here is a few inches of 2 inch clear PVC pipe. You have to make sure that it's, it is pressure rated higher than the pressure where you will be running your system. I'm using 20 inches of Exelon R4000 that I got on eBay for $14. Three half inch to three eighth inch brass reducer bushings for eleven dollars and seventy nine cents. A three fourth inch to half inch adapter, seventy eight cents. A half inch cap, thirty eight cents. A half inch thread coupling, sixty five cents. A three fourth inch ninety degree elbow from Lowe's, forty cents. A half inch slip to thread adapter, thirty eight cents. A half inch ninety degree elbow, forty cents. Two inch Threaded plug, $1.38. A 2 inch slip to thread adapter, $1.53. 2 inch slip to half inch thread bushing, $1.38. 3 2 inch T, $8.52. 2 2 inch couplings, $1.96. 2 inch to half inch slip bushing, $1.97. 2 inch to 3 fourth inch slip bushing, $1.97 as well. 2 inch slip to 1 and a half inch thread bushing, $2.28. 1 and a half inch threaded plug, $1.08. 2 inch inside to outside 90 degree elbow, $2.50. Now for the best stuff. The free stuff, because I already had it. 1 brass air tank dra drain valve. Free. A few. Small zip ties. Free! Some fiberglass window screening. Also free! Some PVC primer and cement. For free! This totaled $65.28. Dirt cheap. Now what you're gonna need is your consumables. I have here a gallon of indicating silica desiccant beads that I got off Amazon for $43.99. Now, children, do not eat, because getting poisoned by indicating silica beads is a terrible way to die. Your dryer actually needs at least a quart, so you need at least that much. But I got a gallon. Now, these are actually reusable, so they'll start off in the color blue, then as they become saturated, they'll turn pink. Then you bake them in an oven at 245 degrees for a few hours and they'll turn back into blue and you can start the process right over again. You may be wondering as to why there's water inside the air compressors. The answer is the same as to why there's water on the outside of this glass. There's water vapor everywhere in the air. And when this water vapor becomes either cold or pressurized, it condenses into liquid water. <sighs> Refreshing. Air systems are dynamic. As the air moves through the system, it creates high and low pressure zones, as well as temperature differentials. To fully analyze an air system, it requires multivariate calculus and differential equations, which are beyond the scope of this YouTube channel. What I am going to explain is how my air dryer actually works. The air will move from here, down this tube, into this larger diameter water trap. Because of Bernoulli's principle, that's right Bernoulli, that's who you're named after. As the air speed decreases, the pressure increases, allowing the water to be trapped at the bottom. 
where, as needed, I will empty it out using the water drain. Then the air will travel back up over here into the pipe where I'll keep my desiccant beads, allowing the excess water to be caught as needed and then traveling back up and out. Now I will have dry air. I will fill the beads in here and then empty out the old beads here. And now we have a functioning air dryer. Because these bushings are manufactured at the stop, I cannot fit the tube all the way through. So I must cut away the stop on both the 3 quarter inch bushing and the half inch bushing. I'm going to use my mini lathe. You can use any tool you want, even a nail file. However, you have to be careful not to scuff up your mating surface. So what I put this piece in here, if I accidentally put it so crooked that this piece will make it so that I can't actually fit this on, there's no way to take it off. And so, to simply make sure I don't do that, I'm putting this temporarily on here, this temporarily on here, and then I'm going to fit this in here and make sure it's centered. pieces. The only difference between them is that this one has a three quarter inch internal pipe and this one has a half inch internal pipe. So here you can see I have my water trap all finished. Now I'm going to dry fit everything together except for the center tube of my um, deskant tube. Alrighty, now time to grip and glue it. There's only three measurements in here that need to be exact. The first is the internal pipe on the head of the water trap side, as well as the internal pipe on the head of the desiccant side. The third is the internal pipe running through the length of the desiccant side. I don't need to worry about exact measurements on, on the water trap side, because this pipe will only come to about here, and it just doesn't need to be exact. For the internal pipe on the desk inside, we want it to be about a half inch to an inch to the end of this plug when it's actually in the desk inside. Now that I 
have this cut to the right length, I'm going to drill a hole in here, in this cap. Then I'm going to drill, drill a bunch of perforations within these two lines before putting some of this mesh over it. So on the inside of this cap here, as you can see, it turns out I had some perforated steel hanging around, so I decided to use that on the inside because it was way less likely to foul. And on the outside here, I zip tied on the window screen, and now I'm going to use some waterproof epoxy right here and here to make sure that the netting stays on permanently. I glued in the inner tube and now I'm ready for the final assembly. Here's my finished air dryer. The only thing I have left to do, once I let this dry overnight, is to my three brass reducer fittings here, here, and here. Then I'll put my drain valve there. So I've let it cure for a couple of days, and after putting on some PTFE tape on my threads, I hooked up my hoses on both sides, and now all I need to do is put in the desiccants. Now I can fire up my air compressors and get back to sandblasting. See you next time, kids, on Hannah's Buck. Girl Power. As always, this show is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Before I go, I would like to introduce the new member of the crew, Schrodinger. He's here to help Bernoulli as the new sound kitty.